What's going on YouTube? How y'all doing? It's been a minute since I posted my last video. It's been like 10 days, almost like two weeks. I know I said I posted a little bit more frequently, but I was on vacation for about like four days. And then when I got back, it was my birthday this past Tuesday. So, you know, we just had to... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Everybody that, that reached out to me, got some real ones. I had a fun time for my birthday. They spent it with friends and family, had some dinner, you know. The ones that reached out, commented on my Instagram posts. I love y'all. In this video, we are doing a high taper. My client had curly hair on top. He has a guy cut in about like a month. So, you know, we had to bless him. Feel me? If you guys stay tuned for this video, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You can hit me up on Instagram, or you can also hit me up on YouTube. So feel free to hit me up, man. Like I always say, everybody, peace and love, baby. What's good, YouTube? How y'all doing? I'm back with another video. I know it's been way too long been about like a week i had so much things going on but i'm back making a video for you guys because i love you guys so much i love y'all so much but we are doing a high taper as you can see i am tapering the back or i'm balding out the back with my babyless liners the line is not going to be that straight because of the angle i was cutting at i didn't want to get in front of my camera so please bear with me i know i did not take my own advice about you know making the the guidelines and the ball line straight so please bear with me i'm sorry For the first step, we have our Andis Masters creating that first guy line about, about fingers width to about half an inch or about an inch. As you, as you guys can see, I was struggling to get the hair you know, cut because his hair is very curly, so it was really hard for my clippers to get through. Um, so what I'm doing when I get to the top is I'm just kind of flicking out, flicking out. It's It was kind of hard because, it, like I said, it was curly, so... The, the guidelines don't look that straight, but as I don't know if you guys watched my previous videos before, but um, just make sure that the you follow your guide and yeah, look at look how uneven. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was the it was the angle I was cutting. So make sure you have the lever all the way open. Just make that first guideline about half an inch to about fingers width. I don't know exactly like how you know how many inches or centimeters that is but yeah uh so we have our number two guard so i'm just taking off the bulk on the hair at the two and i'm just flicking out when i get to the top i'm just trying to clear out the area because i couldn't see when i was making my first guideline so i was like you know what man i have to be able to see so i'm using the two to clear out that that bulk of hair so when i do set in my other guideline it will be able you know i'll be able to see what i'm cutting and whatever and you guys will be able to see what when I'm cutting as well because this video is for you guys because like I said I you know love you <laughs> okay. so now that we got all the bulk out the way with that number two I'm going to close up and blend out that ball line that I did in the beginning with the open lever. Uh, we close it and then we play with it halfway, then open, you know, close it. Play. You see how I play with it. Take out as many dark spots as you can. You got to play with your lever to understand like what hair or what lever is going to cut which hair. So play with it. Use the corners of your blade to kind of take out any dark spots or whatever you need cut it at different angles because his hair is kind of growing at an angle on the right side right there so i'm cutting it at an angle to the right so make sure you guys keep that in mind always use the corners and always play with the lever so now that we're finished with that step we are going to use our number one guard to make the second guideline i have my andis masters purple guard the magnetic guards i don't know if you guys are have access to these guards but I do like using this with coarse hair, 
So what I'm doing is I'm making a guy line about an inch to a half an inch. And when I get to the spot that I want to stop at, I flick out. So that way it doesn't make a hard line. So that way I'm, it's able, I'm able to basically blend it out even easier when I do um, kind of, you know, want to take out that dark spot. But I think on this part, you can see it's kind of blending already. So I'm just using the corners to kind of blend into that number two guard that I did. You can use the corners to kind of uh, take out any of the dark spots so I, i'm just flicking out when i get to the spot that i want to uh so it is it is blending into it so it, it, it'll take some time but if you've been cutting hair for a while like i have it's i mean it's pretty easy to do but i have my zero garden here and now i'm about to just take out that that line that i had with the with the number one i have it closed all the way and when i get there i'm just flicking flick 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 uh because i don't want to go past that number one guard that i did so when i get there to right there flick flick play with the levers flick flick that's probably the best way i could do so i i close it up first and then flick flick and then if i if it's any darker than i i do halfway and then play with the lever open uh i know my my guard has like a little chip in it but i've had these guards since like barber school so i've had these guards for like like nine ten years now so yeah i think it's time for me to get new ones i gotta contact andis um to get some new guards because i know the newer zero guards they came out with before they kind of i didn't like them so i know that andis came out with better ones so yeah yeah um, but i don't know if you guys like masters because they are kind of heavy but i do recommend masters for coarse hair uh because for some reason it's they do they do pretty good for me it's probably one of my favorite clippers the andis because um you can cut honestly any type of hair it's just like a lot of people don't like it because they're very heavy so um but the heavy ones were when you had the corded clippers i don't know if you guys remember the corded clippers but the corded men masters hey man that was, those were heavy you know uh but right here i'm sorry for talking too much guys but right here we have a number two guard like what we did in the back just the deep bulk all the area so we have the number two and i'm just flicking up when i get there getting around the ear so that way i'll be able to set the the lineup pretty you know nicely and then when i get right there i'm just going with the grain just to see what what the guard is going to take down the hair so it, it does it does debulk it so yeah i was talking to my client a lot right here about i think football or something so if he's talking a lot uh, you know that's you know when, when you're a barber you gotta you gotta interact with all your your clients you know that's how you keep your clients you gotta build a relationship with your clients you know uh some people you know i've i've been in a lot like three different shops and like some barbers they don't even talk to their clients and it's kind of like man you got to interact with their clients you know but back to the cut i am gonna ball it out so i'm doing a high taper so i'm doing a ball line kind of where the uh where the hook starts on the top of the head so i'm, I'm doing right where the temple's at or right where the bottom of the vertical bars you just uh balled it out right there and then make sure that you gotta go kind of by the ear don't go behind the ear because your taper is just gonna look all funky behind the ear and i don't i'm that's not my style of a taper uh some people do like it but that's just not me i don't i don't really like the you know the taper so far back over there because it just makes it look so like bursty you feel me so now we're just balding out with my stylecraft balders these ones are actually pretty good i feel like they die no actually i feel like they die pretty quick yeah i feel like they die pretty quick i, I do like the andis ones or, or i do like the the wall ones but these are my stylecraft balders and i do like these ones a lot they they do the job they get very close and everything you just gotta charge them quite a lot so we are gonna have our masters again making the guideline about fingers width or about a half an inch uh, I'm using the corners if when I get around by the ear I kind of make it at an angle I kind of kind of uh, do like a little like when like a rainbow type thing you know because uh, I don't want to go too far in the back uh, in the back of the ear and make it like heck of a big taper so we have our we close the lever right here and then open it up close it halfway open close it halfway open I'm um, using the corners because that's the most impor important part of tapers. You use the corners because you want to, you have more precision. You have, you can, you have more, it's more precise. I'm sorry. I don't know how to, you know, say it. I'm, I'm not really great at explaining things, you know? So we also have our number one guard right here doing the same steps that we did in the, uh, in the back of the head. Number one, get to the top where you want to stop at. You flick out, you flick out. 
uh, make sure that the guideline is about like a half an inch to an inch once you get to the back of the ear you kind of want to round it off or kind of do it at an angle so that way it doesn't make it too far in the back over there so i sound like a broken record yo i really do sound like a broken record so we have our one and a half guard on our uh I think the magic clips yeah the magic clips those are one and a half guard i i got these guards from the the style crafts uh, clippers because they do come with uh, guards so this is a one and a half so what i'm doing i'm just cleaning up that area on the top because um i did see it was dark so with that one and a half would we'll just kind of take out those dark spots because we did a two you remember to take off the bulk so just use the corner of the the clipper or the guard and just just you know flick it out uh, make sure you do press the hair down a lot because you kind of with coarse hair when you do when you cut the hair it kind of brushes it back up so you got to comb a lot when you cut coarse hair so we have our zero guard again so we are just gonna use the corner of the blades the hair is kind of grown at an angle right there so using the corner close it up halfway open play with it a lot to take out any dark spots as necessary um I'm just trying to clean up everything right here because it's already kind of blended so i'm just cleaning it up right here just cleaning cleaning um i know it looks like i I'm, i passed some in the back to the ear right there but his hair is kind of like weird right there it kind of grows at a different angle so yeah i don't know I've, I've been cutting this kid for a long time and i've always every time i cut him back there like it always that kind of gets like a patch or it looks very light back there but you know it's that's just the way his hair is it's it's, it's crazy like that so now for the lineup, we are doing, well, first off, we're just combing out the hair because his hair is very long out there. So you want to get the hair nice and even just by combing it out. I think we're going to come in with a one guard or one and a half open or one open. Yeah, a one open on the masters. We're going to go with the grain. So that way it deep bulks the hairline. So when you do set in that first, you know, line, it's going to make it nice and crispy. So we're doing it with the grain. A lot of people... A lot of people do like a one and a half or you know a two but i like doing a one i mean for this instance his his hair is very long on top so you can do it um either way i i, I like doing a one because to me it it makes it more crispier when you do it with a one other than a one and a half because i don't want to have to keep going over it and then having to brush it back down again with a one and a half or two so a one with the grain a one open with the grain works best for me because that's just like how i like doing it you know um i've been kind of here for a while now i'm not going to tell you that that's the best way but for me it works so but i don't know if you guys seen what i just you know kind of had the the shaving cream right here he had a um i'm just cleaning up the area right there what the shaving cream is gonna do is it's gonna lift the hair when i put a hot towel on it um and also it, it takes off any excess dirt you have on the foreheads so we have our hot towel right here you see that thing steaming you know um make sure it's not too hot for your client's forehead or skin I tested it out on myself on my wrist before putting it on him and I also asked him when I was putting it on is it too hot he said no so yeah so you want to keep it on there for a good probably like 20 to 30 seconds make sure you apply pressure on it uh, so that way the, uh, the steam could you know get to the hair and make it stand up so you want to keep it on there like I said 20 to 30 seconds. So for the lineup, we're going to start from the middle and then work away from left to right. Uh, with the the hot towel, it really did help out because it is cutting like it through like, you know, it's cutting through it like butter. So we're going from the left to right. Um, I always just say, however you guys want to make your lineup, that's on you guys. I can't tell you how to do it. This is all what you feel comfortable with. 
So I start from the middle to the left and then to the right. Make sure it all meets into the middle at the end. Like, but there's really nothing you can say about it. Just, just make sure that the lineup is straight. You know, make sure the lineup is straight and try not to cut your client's forehead. You know, some clients have sensitive skin. Try not to do that, you guys, because it does suck especially when you look at the end and the, the client's hair is all you know his head is all red from you know the, the liner so it's like ugh, don't do that so we're putting in the enhancements on i know a lot of people they get on me for not recording me putting in the enhancements on which i don't understand why um but uh, like I said, just make sure that when you do apply the enhancements, just follow your guide. Follow the lineup. That's all you got to do. That's why I told you guys before. Just make sure that the lineup is straight as possible or as straight as it can be. And then just follow it. Just follow it. Just don't put too much on the forehead because you don't want it too shiny. Uh, so just follow it. You want to just kind of just tap it, tap it, tap it. Um, because I have put a lot on somebody's forehead. And man, the dude, that look, it looks shiny as hell. So... You don't want to do that. Just tap it, tap it, tap it. If you see it and it looks, it looks cool, keep it like that. Just tap it, follow that that uh, lineup. And I mean, you guys are Gucci, man. That's what you got to do. I'll put the, the airbrush machine and also the airbrush gun in the description below. So that way you know which one to get. I do use the, uh, the, the Kiss Express. The Kiss Express uh dye it's uh, i use the black not the jet black just the black and or dark brown i do use those ones so kiss express i'll put it in the description below as well look at that cut y'all looks fresh right let me know what you guys think in the comment section below um thank you guys for watching my video put the post notifications on like comment subscribe man like i say man i'm very humble for you guys to watch me peace and love is always love for me you know so thank you guys a lot until next time i'll see you